Hello, happy uh, Friday. What's up, y'all? How's everybody doing? Uh, I'm AC. You are uh, tuning in to uh, Sign of the Times on the Hope for Us Network, streaming on the uh, the Twitch channel. It's live right now. It's live. Things are happening. What's up? Uh, this is a show, Sign of the Times, where I talk about music and um you know, stuff, music and stuff and mental health awareness stuff and music and culture and music and stuff. So here we are and uh, it's, it's Friday. I hope everybody had a good day. I hope everybody had a good week. I had an awesome week. I had a, an awesome last week as well. I went and saw the uh, the Menzingers. Shout out to uh, to my homie Cats for that. Thank you. Great show, great band. Check them out. With uh, who, who was on the bill with them? Microwave and uh, Rodeo Boys. They're actually from my hometown of Lansing. Kind of kind of crazy, but that was a great show. Uh, shout out to Menzingers and uh, shout out to. Uh, the Salt Shed. You guys have not been to that venue in Chicago. You should check it out. It is amazing. Um, the, the sound is amazing. The staff um, was really nice and great. Um, great venue. Definitely uh, go check out a show there if you can. Um, I definitely did that. What else did I do? These are all things that make me happy, you know, and you should do things that, that make you happy. You know, so going to that show, that was definitely something that made me happy. Um, I went to see a comedy show because I love comedy shows. Who, who was it? Mar Mar Marcella, Marcella, Marcella Aguela. She's dope. I saw her open for Melissa Villasenor about a year ago, and she's so funny. She's hilarious. Um, so she was playing again um, just recently, last week, Wednesday, at Zany's in Chicago. Um, so I, I had to go check out her set. She was amazing. Um, but that's what I've been up to. And just, uh, you know, living life, doing stuff, making music, you know, playing shows, doing stuff. Um, real quick, before we, we, we hop into it too much, um, a lot of you guys know that I make music and you know, I, I write and, you know, I produce and make beats and, you know, an MC and DJ and everything. You know, I also play drums. You know, one band that I play drums for is called The Locals. Uh, the other band that I play drums for that I just recently joined uh, called White Rabbit Object, um, out of, based out of Chicago. Um, this band was just nominated for um, Best emerging artist um uh chicago reader that's amazing um thank you um for that uh to be nominated for something like that is pretty pretty cool that's awesome so if you would like to vote for us um there's definitely links um that you can go click and whatnot i know scott had uh been doing his magic. Um, he'll put them up. You can also go check out White Rabbit Object on their Instagram. They've got links um, to where you can go 
and you can go, you know, check out their music and vote for them as well at the same time. So um, it's pretty awesome to be nominated for anything. <laughs> um, best emerging, excuse me, best emerging artist. That's huge. That's a that's a huge um, honor. So um, thank you for that. Um, please go vote for us. We would really appreciate it. That would be, uh, you know, very cool to to win. I mean, whether we win or not, it's still cool to be nominated and to be um, thought of, you know, as uh, an emerging artist, you know, one of the best. So that is very cool. So thank you very much. Check out White Rabbit Object. It's fun music. It's awesome. You'll dig it. I promise. Um, so that's very cool. That's an awesome, awesome thing. Other awesome, awesome things. Um, uh, also with music is myself. I am releasing more music. I, uh, I released a single about a month ago and now I'm releasing another single, um, called Jumpin' Jacks. It'll be streaming everywhere on all platforms, uh, December 26th. I'm super Super, super stoked about this. Um, this has probably been one of the funnest songs that I've made thus far. I'm really excited for everybody to hear it. Um, I, I feel good. It's like, you know, the more you do something, you know, the, the better you get at it, I guess. Or you should. <laughs> I don't know. So I feel uh, I feel really good about it. Um, if you look at the, the calendar, you know... Uh, I said I'm releasing it on December 26th, which is the day after Christmas, which is also a Tuesday. A lot of you may have, may may not notice, I don't know, because the internet is the internet and you can just go get music whenever you want, this and that and the other. But, you know, new releases have been coming out um, on Fridays. What some of you may not know is that new music used to be released on Tuesdays. Tuesday, like the beginning of the week, pretty much. Like beginning to middle of the week is when they used to release music back in the day. Um, I remember it very well. It was, I mean, growing up, it was the, it was the best thing ever. It was great because, you know, back then you didn't have, you didn't have all the social media, so you didn't have all the, the, the streamings, you know, there was no Spotify, Pandora, you know, like there wasn't a lot of that. There was a lot of radio. You had a lot of radio. Um, and, uh, that's how you knew about new stuff that was coming out radio, whether it was like your, your, your top 40 station or your rock station or, you know, the, the college, you know, radio station or the alternative rock radio station or whatever it may be, you know, a lot of those stations were playing music on the radio and that's how you heard about it. And, you know, they would, play the single on the radio and you would hear it and you'd be like, oh man, this is great. And they'd be like, oh, it's coming out on this day. So you'd be like, oh man, it's coming out on this day, on Tuesday. It would come out and you would get it on Tuesday and you would have the week to kind of listen to it every now and then when you could, you know, during during your work week. And then by the time you had, you know, you hit your weekend, you know, it was boom. You were all into it, you know what I mean? Or you got it on that Tuesday, you know, like me, for example, I got that joint on a Tuesday. Like I, I would either, I, I can say this now because me and my parents are cool, but I would, I would skip school. I said it, kids don't do it. It's not good. Um, But I would like, I would, I would either skip school in the middle of the day and go to the, le the the local record store. Sometimes I would come back to school. Um, either way, I would get it on Tuesday and 
you and your friends would just vibe out and listen to it. And this is when they had cassette tapes and CDs and you would burn music, right? So, like, perfect example. I would get, you know, the lynch mob with Ice Cube and my boy would get uh, Boogie Down Productions, right? And we'd have two of the new records that just dropped that day, on cassette or on CD or whatever, right? Get them on a Tuesday. You'd go home to your boy's house. You'd listen to them, you know? You would dub them on a tape or a CD while you're, like, playing video games or whatever, whatever, you know? And then you would give a copy to your boy. You know what I mean? So it was, like, just rotating, you know, of, like, new music. And you would have, like, that Tuesday night, that Wednesday, that Thursday, that Friday, like, that leading up into the weekend, like, just to listen to that new music. And then by, like, the time the weekend hit, like, whatever party was going on or whatever, whatever, like, whatever new music was hot that week, if it was hot, you were going to hear it that Saturday night at a house party on the college radio station in somebody's car driving by. You know what I mean? Like, that's how it, it used to be back in the day. And the labels, they really ate that up. They, they like, capitalized on that. Because not only were they using the radio stations for, 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 for you know, promo, and promoting the record and marketing and the songs and everything, you know, like you're hearing a song on the radio, and you're like, oh man, I can't wait to hear it. So the records, you know, the record labels are just counting on, on you to be like, yo, I know it's coming out. I'm going to get that. I'm going to get that joint. It was like maximizing their sales, like streams, making people like want to go and buy the record, you know? I remember also back in the day, um, God, like what were the, the the record stores? You had you had the Sam Goodies, um, Tower Tower Records, yo. So on, on new release days on Tuesdays back in the day, they some of some of the Tower Records would stay open until midnight, like straight up would stay open till midnight, and you could wait outside in line at these Tower Records. Until midnight, walk in at 12.01, boom, you could buy that new Guns N' Roses joint, you know? Or you could buy that new MC Hammer record. You could buy that new LL Cool J joint, you know? Like, for real, like, that's how it used to be back in the day. And um, I think, you know, I, I, there's there's been a, a couple artists out there, you know, that have been like, I think they should bring it back, you know, to um, to the uh, to to Tuesday releases, you know. And I and truthfully, I think they should. I'd like to see them bring back a lot of things, you know. Not only like the Tuesday release, you know what I mean, but like, you know. Let me ask you this. When was the last time you you saw one of your favorite artists do, like, I don't know, a stripped-down acoustic version of a song in, like, your local record store? When was the last time you saw, like, your favorite artist do, like, a meet-and-greet in your favorite local record store? That used to be the thing back in the day. Like, artists would show up at your local record store, you'd come in, you'd buy their record, you know, or you'd come in with the record, you know, or their CD, and you'd sign it, you know? Like a book signing, but it's records, you know? The last person I heard of that had done that was Killer Mike. I think Killer Mike just did that recently with his most recent record. Like, he was doing in-stores. But... They don't do that anymore. Like bands used to do in stores. They'd show up and they'd like they promote, you know, and they'd like do like one or two songs acoustically. You know, like I don't see that happening a lot anymore. You know? I know MCs used to do that, you know, used to show up and do do little, you know, quick in store joints. Like, I don't think that happens anymore. 
I don't know. I just think that it should we should take it back, you know? Like there's so much missing, like in the substance of music, you know, with everything that you know is involved in it. You know what I'm saying? Like there's just so much that's missing, you know, like I could go on and on and on about this, you know, like credits, you know, perfect example, you know, how many of you can like actually pick up a copy of like, you know, a favorite record and be like, Oh, this is Tommy boy records. This is Tommy boy records, you know, like, How many can, people can pick this up and be like, oh, this record was mixed by Tony Hoffer. Fits in the tantrums. You know? Like, there's so much missing to what music used to be to what it is today. Um, I think a lot of that's missing, and I think if a lot of that old stuff was brought back, I think there would be a greater appreciation for music. You know, maybe, I, I, I don't know. I just, I, I think that things might be a little bit different. That's it. That's all I'm saying. No one throw ice cream sandwiches at me at a show or lit cigarettes. This is just me talking, my opinions. That's it. That's just how I feel. That's it. But, um, yeah. If you have an opinion, let us know in the chats or hit me up on the side, let me know, you know, who knows, but I think Tuesday releases would be the way to go. That's just me. Tuesday. Okay. That's it. We're going to put this record away. We're going to move on to um, the next uh, segment of the show. It's the end of the year. Um, lots of cool things happen at the end of the year. Uh, for you music people out there, which a lot of you are, for those of you that are watching the show, um, it's that time of year when your Spotify Wrapped comes out. Now, for those of you that do not know what the Spotify Wrapped is, that is uh, pretty much uh, we'll, we'll say like all your your top artist and top plays and all that stuff and this and that and the other um mine came out it, it's no big surprise that um my number one um um genre was hip-hop um no surprise at all it's kind of funny be, before we we dive into this you know because your spotify rap takes everything that you've listened to within a year or whatever compiles them. And da, 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 da. This is the first year where I did not play in a cover band. So <laughs> my Spotify rap for this year was a lot more accurate. <laughs> we'll just, uh, we'll, we'll put it that way. Um, a lot more accurate. Um, so obviously my top artist, um, was De La Soul, uh, followed by Wu-Tang Clan, uh, Doja Cat, Red Man, uh, and then Eminem. I th somewhere in there, I said that, um, I think I had, like, posted somewhere, like, in an Insta story or somewhere. I was like, you know, my top artists of the year are going to end up being, like, Doja Cat and Take Him Back Sunday and like maybe Red Man, probably De La Soul. I was close. I, I the only one I didn't get in there was Take Him Back Sunday, and I'm shocked that that one I they weren't in my top. My bad. I'm sorry, guys. Um, but that's that's how my rap ended up turning out to be. You know, De La Soul was my top artist, hip hop. Uh, was my top genre. Um, these things are so cool, you know. My, um, I feel like, because uh, other people will, 
will like tell me how many genres that they listen to or like their you know how many listens or hours or whatever and i'll be like your listens are way less than my, or way more than mine but i but i'll be like i listen to music constantly all the time like how is that possible you know we can't count all the hours that we listen to vinyl music. I listen to a lot of vinyl at home. Um, I'll come home, I'll throw on a record, I'll start cleaning, cooking, you know. Record ends, I'll put on another record. I'll keep doing what I was doing, whatever, whatever. So, like, if there was a way to somehow count the hours, calculate that, you know, to vinyl listening i guess as opposed to like streams you know on spotify i'd be up there I'd, my numbers would be ridiculous bonkers through the roof mad numbers um but yeah i'm, I'm interested to see um what next year's raft will be like um, maybe de la will still be in my top <laughs> Um, what was that? I think It's So Easy was like one of my favorite, my top songs, a day last song. So, um, it'll be, uh, it'll be interesting, you know, definitely, um, definitely in this new, in this, this new year coming up, if you will, um, 2024, I definitely, I definitely would like to listen to more new music. Um, I, I like all genres of music. Um, I love punk rock and hip hop, hardcore. Obviously, those are like my main genres, but I love it all, you know. Um, so definitely, I want to, you know, check out more music. Um, just listen more. So, and if, if there's somebody out there that you should think I'd be, I should be listening to, let us know in the comments, you know, or let me know. You know, on one of my social media things at AC Loves Music, because um, I'm always trying to find new music to listen to. So, send me what you got. But yeah, 2024 definitely want to uh, listen to more music, newer stuff, see what's out there, explore. You know, all that. So that'll be good. That'll be good. Um, let's move on. Let's get out of that uh, that Spotify rap for a second. That was pretty, pretty cool. Um, quick shout out um, before we go any further to uh, to Scott. Scott is, um, you can't see him, but he is the the man behind the scenes. He is the the producer, the, the, the person that has all these graphics and gets the pictures and the sounds and, and everything. Um, he, he's the one that, that, that gets everything rolling for this show and all the other shows uh, on the Hope For Us Network. Um, a huge shout out to Scott, especially since um, I just completely switched up the entire flow of the show on him. And he, right there, caught it. Didn't even miss a beat. <laughs> that's, that's a professional. So, Scott, thank you for always being on point, being awesome. You are uh, you are the man. You make all of this move so smoothly, and I thank you for it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. With that being said, we have the Spotify Wrapped. Let's keep it kind of in that same thing, you know, that same thing, you know, like uh, you know, these were your top artists on uh, Spotify. Let's uh, let's keep it like um, top five Christmas type stuff, right? Let's do that. Um, everyone's got their favorite song, their favorite movie, this and that and the other, whatever it may be. <clears throat> favorite holiday, favorite ice cream, favorite TV show, favorite sports team, favorite band. Everyone's got favorites. So I thought it'd be fun to uh, break out some favorites in the spirit of the holiday season. Of uh of top fives, and I thought 
I would share my top fives with all of you out there, if you don't mind. Cool? Um, let's do that. We're going to start with uh, with the number five on my list. Top five Christmas songs, okay? Number five on my list is going to be the one and only Sir Paul McCartney. <laughs> Wonderful Christmas. Uh, here's the thing about this song. It, it's it's like I like it, but I don't like it, but I like it. There's something about it, like like the like the there's like bells or something going on, and like his voice. It it sounds like things are clashing and they shouldn't work right, but somehow it does. I don't know. It's just a weird, it's a really weird song to me. But for some reason, I really, really, really like it. So whenever I hear it, like whenever it comes on like the radio, like if I'm, you know, in my whip or if I got, you know, Christmas music playing in my crib, um, like I cringe, but I get happy at the same time. It's really weird. I can't explain it. But that's my number five, Paul McCartney. Uh, wonderful Christmas time. It's a weird title for a song, too. Um, number four, moving on. Uh, number four is going to be a uh, Miss Brenda Lee, the song Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree. I said that totally weird. Rocking Around the Christmas Tree. The song's been along for a long time. I don't know how long. I forgot the the, the year. A long, long time though. It's been a long time. Old song. Been a long, been around. Been around. Um, song's been around so long that I think it finally just like got some like Billboard 100 accolade, whatever you say that word. 1958. Thank you, Scott. Yeah, this is, that's how that's how old the song is. It's from 1958. This song is from 1958, and I think it finally just cracked like the Billboard Hot 100 or something like that. I don't know, something like that. Um, other people have covered the song, but Brenda Lee did the original. Um, um, I, I I don't know what it is about the song. It's a comforting song to me, I guess. I don't know. It's just something about it. Just, I don't know. It's a cute song, whatever. So it's nice. Um, we're going to move on to so the next song that I know a lot of you know. Some of you love it. Some of you hate it. Some of you love to hate it. Some of you would, I don't know, maybe I'll just stop. The number three song, my favorite, is Mariah Carey. <laughs> All I want for Christmas. Um, love it or hate it, I like the song. It, it, it trips me out because I remember when I first heard the song, when it came out when I was a kid, like, I uh, thought nothing of it. And as the years went by, I was like, who is she covering? Like who who is like who is she covering? Like this is this can't be her song, you know? But then like to find out that like it really was her song, you know, you know, being as I was a kid, you know, finding out this was her song, it's unbelievable, you know? And it's crazy to think that like one of the biggest Christmas songs of all time was written in your lifetime, you know, like, it's kind of crazy, you know, I'm older that's, than that song, oof, 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 that hurts, um, but I think this is a great song, there's a lot of great elements in this song, musically, it's ridiculous, I really, I wish I knew the story behind the song, you know, 
I wish I wish I knew who wrote it, how much of it she wrote. I wish I knew who brought this song to her. Was it her idea in the first place? Like, whose idea was it to have like certain like vocal lines in that song? Like, like the backing vocals in that in that song almost make that song. Like, there's so many like little little pieces and nuances to that song that really make that song. It's just it's ridiculous. I'm gonna stop there. I could I could go on for a good 42, 43, 44 minutes just taking that that song apart and just dissecting it. Well, we're not gonna do that. We got other things we gotta talk about, but. Number three would be uh, Mariah Carey. I want for Christmas. Moving on. Number two, my favorite songs. Um, you too. That's my number two song. Uh, Christmas, uh, baby, please come home. I think it's a great song. Um, they did cover this song. Um, I think. Uh, Dar Darlene Love, I think, was the first person, the original person that did the song. I think so. Um, but I, I love, I, I, something about the simplicity of the song is just so. It's just beautiful, you know. It's not too much. It's not too heavy. It's real light, right in the pocket, right where it needs to be. It's not too much, um, and the music video for it is pretty cool. They're like they're just like uh, in an empty like auditorium theater or something on stage, just playing the song, just the four of them, just so cool, you know. Just Bono doing his Bono thing, you know, just doing his thing. The Edge just doing his Edge thing, just hanging out. It's a great video. Great song, check it out. Um, it's dope. And then moving on, my number one all-time favorite Christmas song of all time by the Kings of Rock. Number one, Run D M C Christmas and Hollis. This song. <laughs> I remember growing up, like, when MTV still played music videos, like, way back in the day. I used to love when this video came on. Because, one, there weren't a whole lot of rap videos out back then. Um, and, two, on top of not being a lot of rap videos, there definitely weren't any, like, Christmas rat songs out there, you know what I mean? So like when this hit, I was like, man, no way. You used to love when this video came on. Um, it didn't matter what I was doing, where I was, whether it was at, you know, where whether I was home or if I was like visiting like my bio dad or if I was with, you know, my my grandparents or whoever, you know, wherever I was, if this video came on, I had to stop and watch it. Um, I loved it. It's, I mean, it's Run DMC, Kings of Rock, you know, rest in peace, uh, J Master J. Um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, on a on a recent episode of Drink Champs, um, DMC, I do believe he tells a brief story of how this song came to be, and it's pretty interesting. So. If you're into into podcast and learning about stuff, especially like hip hop, like cool hip hop stuff, I would definitely check that episode out. It's definitely worth a listen. Some great stories, some really really great stuff. In there. Check that out, please. Um, that's my top five and songs. Okay, um, let's move on. Let's do movies, right? So, if you'll excuse me a second. 
iced coffee. Almost 10 o'clock at night on a Friday. That's how wild I am. So, my top five Christmas movies. Um, before we get into this, <clears throat> Die Hard is not on the list. Okay? Not on the list. Great movie. It's not on the list. Is it a Christmas movie? I don't know. Some people say it is. Some people say it's not. I'm not going to get into that. I don't know. Don't really care. Bruce Willis is in it, though. I'll tell you that, and that's dope. And that's where I stand on Die Hard. Cool? Here we go. We're moving on. My top five Christmas movies. Here we go. Number five, coming in hot, we got Edward Scissorhands. Yes, we got it. Johnny Depp, Edward Scissorhands. This movie was dope. It had um, it had the the rider in it, right? The Winona. Um, you had Mr. Depp in it. That movie, it was dope. I loved it. Great movie. I loved, uh, you know, when he would like uh, the 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 ice and it would like snow ice shavings. You know, he. I'm not talking anymore. Number five was Edward Scissorhands for my top five Christmas movies. Number four. Uh, number four is everyone's favorite. Um, and that's why it's in my top four. Uh, Elf. Number four, Elf. With, um, yeah, that guy, Will Ferrell. Um, I think this movie's hilarious. Um, I think it's in theaters again for the holiday season or something. I would definitely go check it out. Um, I think it's a great Christmas movie. I. Uh, I, I loved it. Uh, for anyone that's seen it, you already know. I, I can't say enough. There's there's a line, like the famous line, like how do you, the Christmas cheer sing for everyone high and neat. I don't know. For those of you that know, you know it. I don't know it word for word, but I I know I know what it is. I, I know it. Um, great movie. It's dope. Elf. Um, I did hear a rumor, don't quote me on this, this is, like I said, rumor, that um, they wanted to do, like, an Elf 2 or something like that for, like, a ridiculous amount of money. Like, ridiculous amount of money. And um, Will Ferrell turned it down. Good on him, you know? Like, you know, if that's true, you know? Good on you, you know, because sometimes, you know, you can't, sometimes you just can't make a part two to movies. You know, you just got to let that one movie be what it is. Let it be that classic, you know, and move on. So um, if that rumor is true, props to you, Will Ferrell. Shout out. But uh, number four, uh, Elf. Love that movie. Makes me happy. Ha, ha, ha. Moving on. Number three on my uh, top Christmas movies is Gremlins. Gremlins. Gremlins, Gremlins. Um, what, what's, the, what's the rule? Don't, don't feed them. Don't feed them after 12. Don't feed them after 12. And don't get them wet. And they don't like bright lights. Yep, Gremlins. Um, for those of you that have not seen Gremlins, go watch it. It's awesome. Um, about this this kid that gets this like weird animal thing from like um like a like a like a freak show um like pawn shop type thing 
I think it's like dad got it for him as a gift or something. I don't know. And brought it home and accidentally, you know, it got wet and all these, you know, gremlin creatures grew. I'm going to stop talking. Anyways, it's a great movie. If you haven't seen it, gremlins, it's hilarious. Go check it out. Moving on. Number two, this movie, classic. Number two movie, number two. Number two, it's going to be Scrooged. Scrooged, number two, with Bill Murray. Yo, this uh, this movie, classic. Number two, I could watch this movie. What am I talking about? I have watched this movie over and over and over again. Um, it's the basic story of, uh, what is it, the three different spirits or ghosts that come to visit him throughout the course of the night and he's like this horrible like TV executive and what is it the ghosts of past present and future come to visit him and he changes his ways and um yeah it's a good movie it's really it's really cute what what what's the what's that what's the ad adapt I can't think of the other uh, word uh Scott adaptation Tiny Tim's in it. I can't. I can't. I don't. I don't. I don't remember. I'm so horrible. This movie is like a classic, and I can't even like tell you the backstory of it. <sighs> Either way, um, that's it. Oh, that's so bad. Christmas Carol. Thank you. Wow. Somebody did not eat their Wheaties today. That's it. Christmas Carol. Um, that's where they took it from. Wow. Cool. Let's move on. <laughs> Cause apparently I'm failing at this tonight. Um, so number two was Scrooged. My number one favorite all time Christmas movie of all time. That makes me super giddy, 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 happy. And makes me, I don't know, just happy. Uh, a Christmas story with, uh, Ralphie and his brother and the parents and, You'll shoot your eye out and the, the neighbor's dogs and, you know, you know, uh, drink your Ovaltine and, uh, and Fred Gile. Yeah. Speaking of that's, that's, that's how much I love that movie. I, I, I have it. I have the lamp. That's that's how much I love that movie. Um, classic. Um, I love that they still play it on the holiday season. Um, what they they changed it. They used to play it like a ridiculous amount. Like when I say ridiculous, I mean I feel like back in the day. They would start playing Christmas Story like maybe a couple weeks before Christmas. And then they would play it all day starting Christmas Eve. And it wouldn't stop until like the day after Christmas. And now I feel like they start playing Christmas Story like Christmas Eve night. And then Christmas night, they're done with it. They're like, nope, you're done. <laughs> Um, either way, I don't care. I'm glad that it's still being played. I'm still glad that it's, you know, a favorite to, to some people. Um, I don't know. I think it's a, I think it's a great movie. I think it's hilarious. I think it's funny. Uh, I, I think, um, I, I just think it's one of those great Christmas movies that, uh, that everyone should love and watch and enjoy you know lots of uh lots of funny you know one-liners and jokes and you know i'll shoot your eye out or you'll shoot your eye out who hasn't heard that one you know what i mean um i don't know i just think it's a great movie i'm gonna stop blabbing about it because um i could do that forever especially about that movie so i'm gonna stop that's my number one 
all time favorite Christmas movie. We got through the list. We did it. I'm so glad. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, well, with that being said, we uh we're about done. It's the end of the night. It's the end of the show. We're gonna close it up. But you know, we can't we can't close up the night without the uh the the, the props segment. Every uh every episode, I give props to uh a, a female uh, in, in the industry whether it's music or the arts or entertainment or whatever it may be um i do that every episode and this episode uh i wanted to to talk about an mc that um i thought was out of this world killer had bars um was one of the, the dopest um, female MCs back in the day. This MC that I'm talking about, her name is Bahamadia. Uh, Bahamadia, she uh, came out, her, her debut dropped uh, in like uh, 96. Um, it was called Collage. Um, dropped in 96. Uh, I know she's from Philly. She um she came up kind of like that whole like um like that whole like East Coast Jersey Philly connect like the Roots Jill Scott Erica Badu um you know that whole circle of of people um she's done tracks with those people she's worked with uh, Jedi Mind Tricks she's worked with um, Guru Rest in Peace from um. Uh, the legendary gang star. Matter of fact, Guru um, was uh, the one that uh, kind of put her on, kind of, I guess, kind of got her going back in like 93, 94, I guess. Um, but um, yeah, she came up in Philly. She was a DJ. She did some MCing. Um, she's put out. I know she she put out collage in '96, and then I want to say she put out um, a couple records on her own after that. So I think she's got like three or four LPs out. But then she's done, you know, guesswork on other people's records. You know, like I said, she's done work with the Roots and uh, Guru Jedi Mind Tricks, um, Erica Badu. The first time I ever heard her was on a, a compilation record called Sound Bombing, Sound, Bo Sound Bombing 2. It's this huge um, uh, hip-hop uh, collab um, with the kids now, I guess, would call mixtapes. I don't know. Um, but she was on a track called Chaos with uh, another M East Coast um, MC, Talib Kweli, who's legendary, who Talib Kweli was part of, <coughs> excuse me, Talib Kweli was uh, one half of the hip hop group Black Star, which had uh, consisted of uh, Most Def uh, and DJ High Tech. They were Black Star, the three of them. Most Def, if y'all don't aren't familiar with his name. You might be familiar with uh, the name Yasmin Bay, I think is the name he goes by now. I'm getting a little bit too far off track. But first time I heard Bahamadia was on a track with Talib Kweli on Sound Bombing, Raucous Records. Um, if you guys want to check out some old school underground hip hop, that is definitely another record to check out. Um, Sound Bombing, Raucous Records. out cold dope um but again back to bahamadia she had probably one of the smoothest flows back in the day and she could go up against anybody on a track male female it didn't matter she had bars she was smooth her delivery just it pulls you in and just the way she she 
her flows were over the beats. There was nobody out there like her. You know what I mean? Like, you know, she, you know, like, she was, she was no Queen Latifah. And Queen Latifah's dope. She was no MC Light. And MC Light was dope. She was no Moni Love. Moni Love was dope. Like, Bahamadia was her own person. Like, her own style. Um, and that's something that I, I love about her, something that I highly respect uh, of her, and she deserves all the props, all the flowers in the world. Um, so please, if you're looking for some good, solid, old school hip hop out there, please go check out Bahamadia. She's amazing. She's she's she is one of the illest. She's dope. Uh, I wouldn't wouldn't tell you wrong. So check her out. Go check her out. Cool, cool. All right, peace. And with that being said, that's a wrap. That's done. It's the end of the show, y'all. We're done. Um, I want to thank y'all for uh, for tuning in with me tonight. Uh, this year, <laughs> thank you. Uh, I truly appreciate it. Uh, thank you to uh, Carl and the Hope for Us Network for allowing me to do this and wanting me to do this. It's been a lot of fun. Um, again, shout out to Scott for making all of this look good and making it sound good and just everything. I truly appreciate it. Thank you to all of you for spending your time with me uh, on this Friday night to hear me talk about music and cool stuff and things that make you happy. You know, um, I hope you picked up some things that you may not have known about. Um, share it with your friends, you know, sharing is awesome. You know, we all learn. Um, that's it. It's been a lot of fun. Going to get out of here. Everybody have a happy and a safe holiday. Uh, have a good, happy New Year's. We will be back January 19th, all right? New episodes, new stuff. You know, new stuff. Make sure you follow us on all the socials. Uh, Hope for Us Network on the Instagrams, the the the, the Facebooks, the, the TikToks, the threads, all that. Make sure you follow me, AC Loves Music. Been a, it's been a lot of fun. Thank you so much. This is uh, Sign of the Times, AC, Hope for Us Network. I'm out of here. Be safe. Take care of one another. I'll see you all next time, all right? Peace out.